Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4 of Primem's Playlist. My name is Prim and as per usual, I'll be analyzing 5 underrated K-pop tunes and recommending them based on songs you already know and love. I think today we're really going to display one of my favorite aspects of K-pop, how it experiments with genres throughout different time periods, putting its own spin on anything from the 90s to the 50s to today's second of choice, the 80s. Safe to say, we have a really interesting spread of songs here that I can't wait to show off. And, if you're as impatient as I am to hear these songs, then consider donating to my Patreon. All donors get access to each episode's playlist on Fridays, a full two days before the episode drops. Alright, shameless plug is over, let's pull up the playlist. Alright, at almost 15k views on Stone Music Entertainment, our first song today is Home Dance by rapper Son J. This song is simultaneously calming and upbeat, starting off with just a few synth guitar stings punctuating Son J's voice, then filling out with more percussion and other synths. In a way, the percussion almost sounds like a collage of different, usually unrelated sounds, combining a trap-like, more electronic bass and snare sound, with more experimental pitch percussion, with what sounds like just straight up a tambourine. Pretty much every beat of this percussion loop uses a completely different, distinct sound. I also really like the contrast between the second verse and the rest of the song, with most of the song being more clear and upbeat, and the second verse being more blurry, if that makes any sense. Um, the percussion like grows more sparse, and the synths blend together into longer notes and a less pronounced rhythm. And then, everything pops back into place at the second chorus. One person in the comments of this video actually said that Home Dance sounds like Zico's More Chill Tracks, and honestly I couldn't agree more. However, my first thought when listening to this song was actually the soundtrack to one of my favorite video games, Undertale. Yep, only song one, and we're already doing gamer references, buckle up. The rhythm of the guitar synth at the beginning kind of reminds me of the hotel theme, and the tone shift during the second verse reminds me of Ghost Wave and Chill. The song in general sounds like something Napsablook would lie on the floor to. So if you want to channel your inner sad ghost, and honestly, isn't that what we're all doing these days, then take a listen to Home Dance. Let's hear song number two. Song number two today is Seven Do by duo group Double V, featuring singer-songwriter Son Woo Jung Ah, currently at a little over a thousand views on Super Sound Buds. Right away, this is a much more upbeat song than our previous track, starting off with a little playful mid-tone synth and fast-paced drums, then piano glissandoing straight into the chorus. One thing I noticed during the chorus is this particular, like, high-pitched sparkly synth that when combined with the electronic percussion and general, like, upbeat tempo of the song, kind of reminds me of 80s workout music. However, there are more modern elements to the song too, especially in the bass line. What caught me off guard though was the complete switch in genre during the chorus, scrapping the original tempo and instrumental in favor of a slower beat, even like kind of a different time signature, and an accordion, just straight up an accordion. It goes back to the original genre for the final chorus though, and even adds in an overdriven electric guitar for a little extra 80s flavor. Coming up with recommendations for this song is especially hard due to that genre switch at the bridge, but I will do my best. Most of the song reminds me of something that Crayon Pop would sing, and the 80s elements remind me of a more upbeat version of Neon by Yukika and I Feel You by Wonder Girls. The latter especially from a high-pitched sparkly synth, and you know, not really much past that. The bridge though reminds me a lot more of Stella Jang's more jazzy work, like Villain, and in terms of sun genre changes, the closest I can think of is 24 Hours by Sunmi, though more in terms of how different the genres are than what genres are actually being used. So if you're a fan of any of these, then check out Seven Do. At the very least, you'll probably like part of it. Next song, please. Song number three is Anywhere by R&B soloist June, coming in at 22k views on One The K. I know I say this a lot, but the thing that stood out the most to me was the percussion. Apart from the standard drum components, there's also this hollow woodblock sound added in, as well as a vibrating washboard-esque element, bringing back memories of like elementary school music class. The rest of the song heavily focuses on guitar and bass, but in multiple different implementations. There's like a standard, 
I'm actually not sure if it's a guitar, it might be like a piano, it's kind of a fine line between. But there's that and a bass in there for chords and a bass line and stuff. But then there's also added in like these tiny guitar and bass samples with vastly different textures. So there's like this smooth, echoey, like single plucked note riff. There's some very wet bass stings. There's some more rhythmic muted guitar bits. The list goes on. It almost reminds me of those shirts covered in embroidery in like the same color as the shirt, but in a shinier thread. It's all the same instrument, it's all the same kind of vibe, but just a whole different texture. I have no idea why this song was so hard for me to come up with comparisons for. Like, last song on the playlist, at least there was like a major genre change. This just has the same upbeat retro feel throughout. It's kind of like a faster, less synth-based, less whispery version of Retro Feature by Triple H. Though honestly, it's more similar to the music at the beginning of the music video for Retro Future than the actual song Retro Future. In googling more retro-themed K-pop songs, especially early 80s themed ones as my friend online suggested, I found Days Gone By by Day 6, which had a similar soft rock vibe to Anywhere, and that same friend also recommended I Just Called to Say I Love You by Stevie Wonder as a western pop connection from that actual time era. Basically, if you're looking for something with an early 80s soft rock feel, go take a listen to Anywhere. How about song number 4? With a little under 15k views on Stone Music Entertainment, our fourth song today is Too Old to Die Young by electronic music band Idiotape. Now, if you know me, you know I love me a good harsh synth. And well, this song is absolutely full of them. From the bass in the opening, to the descending sting that comes in soon after, to the discordant piano-esque chords that start halfway through the song, there's a new harsh electronic element being added at every turn. Combine this with the fast tempo and the 16th note bass drums, and you have quite the energetic song, a large change from the chill vibes we've had so far on this playlist. One notable thing about this song is that there are no vocals. It is just instrumental all the way through, which is very uncommon in K-pop, usually something reserved for like album introductions, like the intro tracks on albums, and that's it. I gotta say, that bass synth in the opening seriously reminds me of SNSD, like the Mr. Mr. and Catch Me If You Can eras in particular. If you're into J-pop, you might appreciate the combination of harsh synths and those discordant piano stings, cause that's like a combination very reminiscent of Reel's work. Back to K-pop though, the song feels like something Alexa would sing along to, especially in her Do or Die era. Mostly though, I think the SNSD comparison is best on an individual instrument level, so if you want something reminiscent of like an experimental remix sampling Catch Me If You Can or Mr. Mr., definitely check out Too Old To Die Young. Let's pull up our last song! Our last song for today, coming in at 3,000 views on Super Sound Bugs, is When Did You Know by Aqua Bird. Wait, didn't we review this in episode 1? Well folks, in episode 1 of this podcast, I reviewed the DMCJ version of When Did You Know? But recently, Super Sound Bugs has also uploaded the bronze version of this song. Given various context clues, such as everything except vocals sounding completely different, I assume that bronze is another music producer taking a crack at this tune just like DMCJ back in episode 1. So, let's get one thing out of the way. Bronze's production style is extremely 80s. From the electronic percussion with that startling snare drum, to that main melody synth, to the sparkling accents similar to the like second song of this episode, this absolutely screams 80s synth pop. In fact, I think Bronze might have added a little extra reverb to Aquabird's vocals. At this point, I'm assuming Aquabird refers to a vocalist to blend them into this like more traditionally echoey style. And just when you think it couldn't get any more 80s, the overdriven guitar solo comes in during the song's final section. An interesting textural contrast actually with Aquabird's more cute soft vocals. And just like a lot of music from that era, the song ends with a slow fade out. When it comes to this kind of 80s music combined with cute female vocals, there's nothing more fitting than Every Day I Love You by Vivi and Hostel from Luna. Even the lead synth is pretty similar. Honestly though, the best comparison isn't to a specific song, but rather to a genre of fan creations online. Yes, if you've been a fan of any music ever, and you've been browsing YouTube, 
you're bound to have seen 80s remixes of your favorite songs floating around. Within the K-pop community, these are often actually mashups, just using the instrumental of an 80s or 80s inspired song. I'm gonna spare y'all my rants on how much I dislike mashup creators calling one instrumental one acapella mashups remixes because of how it could confuse those outside of the mashup community who are only familiar with like the I made an original instrumental to this song usage of the word remix. Instead, I'm just gonna say that if you like 80s remixes of any kind, you'll love the bronze version of When Did You Know. It's practically an 80s remix of itself. And just like that, we've gone over our five songs for this episode. But if you've been following along with this podcast, you know we're not done yet. We have one more song to review. But to know which song, we have to spin the wheel of segments. And this week's segment is... Demo Reel. If you've been into K-pop for a while, you've heard of demo songs. They're proof-of-concept versions of songs, usually with a similar or the same instrumental as the final song, but with work-in-progress or placeholder lyrics sung by another artist. Essentially, they're how producers, composers, songwriters, etc. show what their song is supposed to sound like. Hearing work-in-progress versions of your favorite songs is always an interesting journey, and it shows. Demos of K-pop songs can reach millions of views. But with this popularity comes confusion. Anything from promotional remixes to fan-made English covers to even random unrelated songs with similar titles can be promoted online as demo versions, either by accident or to get more clicks. So my goal of this segment is less to show off underrated demos and more to show off which demos you find online are actually demos, not like mislabeled covers or whatever. Now that you get what this segment is all about, let's talk about You Think My Girl's Generation, also known as SNSD. Let's be honest, if you're listening to this podcast and you're not my literal dad, you've heard this song. SNSD is one of, if not the most well-known K-pop girl group of all time, at least on my side of the planet. And the official release of You Think has over 45 million views on SM Town. To describe the song itself though, it's confident, sassy, and arguably a little bit angry, filled with brassy synth stings, a super low droning bass, and rattling percussion. SNSD absolutely rocks this concept and this song, but we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about Sarah Forsberg. Sarah Forsberg, also known as Sarah, spelled S-A-A-R-A, is not just a composer and arranger involved in the final version of You Think, but is also the woman who recorded the demo vocals. She has a harsh, medium-high pitched voice that gives off just the right air of ticked off confidence to match the tone of this song. To give you a general idea, her voice kind of reminds me of Soyeon from G-Idol, but with like a heaping teaspoon of Ryujin from Itzy and Sihyun from Dreamcatcher thrown in as well. My only real complaint about this demo is how short it is. The second chorus is just straight up gone, with the second pre-chorus leading directly into the rap, and it's missing that little instrumental segment at the end. A YouTuber by the name of Bam Karen Cover actually edited together a version of this demo track that has the same song structure as the final song. I put that in the playlist for this episode alongside the original demo. And with that, we end episode 4 of Primo's Playlist. If you enjoyed this episode, check out the original songs at bit.ly slash pmpep4. That's bit.ly slash capital PMP underscore lowercase ep underscore three, as in just the number. And if you'd like to support this podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you really want to go above and beyond, donate to our Patreon page for special perks. Links to those can be found at linktree slash prims playlist. That's linktr.ee slash p-r-i-m-m-s-p-l-a-y-l-i-s-t. Our podcast is a proud member of Studio 16. If you enjoy our podcasts, please support us for free by joining our Discord server at discord.gg slash 6 capital R lowercase xw capital fg lowercase f. And if you want to learn more, visit studio16network.wixsite.com. That's lowercase studio, the number 16, lowercase network, dot W-I-X-S-I-T-E, dot com. Thanks for jamming with me today.